Okay, this wood has been cut uh, less than a week ago, so it's wet. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to do a saddle-shaped bowl, very similar to what you saw me do last week. Uh, but I really want to turn it wet, and, and we'll talk about wet and how wet is different. This one is interesting. This was a commission piece, and the person requested that I save that branch. Uh, not easy to save a branch because how do you save a lump on the side and still make a round bowl? So we're going to do that though. We're going to challenge accepted. I think I'll be able to save that quite nicely. So uh, stay tuned and see how I did that. That'll be in a subsequent video. First video will be this one. Second one will be this one. So yesterday when I was starting to cut this up, I thought this would be the piece I'd do second. I've since changed my mind just because this piece intrigues me, and I'm going to turn it first. So everybody sees a piece of wood. They see a branch coming out on the side, broken off here. They say, oh, can you turn a bowl and, and leave that branch in? It'd be really cool. Uh, to which I usually say, don't be silly. So here we are mounted up in the lathe. So if you can envision this, like some bowls I've been doing lately, it's going to be a bit uh, saddle shaped. Although normally I would mount this on the, this would be the top, I'd mount it on the lathe. I've done it in the reverse just to do something with this branch a little different. And it is going to be different, so let's get spinning. People often ask me at what speed I turn. You can see here what I'm doing. I actually turn it on and increase my speed up until it starts to vibrate and then slow it down until the vibration just goes away. And that's the speed at which I turn it. The fastest you can turn is the best speed for you. I misspoke earlier. I said this bowl was going to be saddle shaped. It is not. It's going to be shaped like a regular bowl, except it's going to have a discontinuous edge at the top. Because the top is the flat part on this bowl, and that's what's mounted up against my drive, I'm shaping now what's going to be the bottom. So it will be a continuous shape on the bottom, and from the bottom up, it will look like a normal bowl until we start getting into those branches. This bowl is wet. This was a tree a week or two ago. So it's quite wet and wet is different. Turning wet wood is different than turning dry wood. It's easier to turn. You don't get as fine of a finish generally off your tool. But the other thing is you can usually turn it much thinner. But the other thing is it will warp. If it doesn't crack, it will warp and go out around. Since the top of this bowl is discontinuous, it will not be noticeable even if it does go out of round. Now, just a, an update and a word on safety. When I turn, I know I've mentioned this before, but I try and stay out of the line of fire. What's the line of fire? If anything's going to come off of this bowl, it's going to come off in this plane here and most likely go backwards. So I tend to stand to this side. And just now, I was just putting some finishing cat touches on this and this piece came off. And it flew that way. Now looking at it, you can see it. this wood here was rotted in between here. There was a branch. So that piece, I couldn't see it. But inside, that piece was already not attached. Like that there, you can see, was actually not growing into this piece. So, so I want to talk a little bit about how I want to save this feature right here, which was the branch. So this is the outside of the bowl. And I'm, I may have to leave it a little bit thicker to maintain as much of this branch as I can. But uh, right now, you'll see that this rim of the bowl is right here, right up against my tool rest. But if I spin that around to where the branch is that I want to maintain, and that's really way in here, 
my bowl's not going to be that thick. So that means I've got to take the diameter of the rest of this bowl down to where it matches just the outside of this diameter of the feature that I want to keep. That way, when I turn the inside away, I won't turn all of this away. Otherwise, I'm going to be way down here on this and the majority of this will be gone. Hopefully that will make a little more sense as I get turning here. Remember this piece flew off yesterday. So I have glued it back on. I'm going to put some more glue on it and I'm going to fill it eventually. But I've got a bit of dilemma. There's two options here. That's mass. And as it turns, mass spinning creates centrifugal force, which it wants to throw this off. So I have options. I can leave it because right now I have glued the maximum amount of surface area. Whereas if I start to hollow the inside, then I've got very little surface area, but I can get more glue in the exact spot. And because there's not as much mass, there won't be as much centrifugal force. Hopefully that didn't bore you with the science, but uh, just know right now that piece is a little precarious. If that comes off, it's going to come off this way. So I'm going to stand over this way so that again, I'm not in line of fire. Let's go ahead and reduce the diameter a little bit to where it just gets me to this. And then I'll know that I'm okay when I go to turn the inside. I'm keeping my speed way down because I don't want this piece to fly off. Now I have seen, I do see now that the crack has opened up a bit. So I'm going to stop here and put some more glue on it. Uh, but I'm getting close. You see here, I've got a little bit, I'm away from the tool rest here, but I'm, let's move this right in there. I'm up against that, but I'm away here. So I've got a little bit left to go. Now, I think I'd better get some glue on that because that crack has opened up significantly, which means that piece has moved. So I'm going to I'm going to take this off so I can get some material down inside there, fill it. There, now you can see that crack quite well. That that was tight, so that's moved. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it back in, so I'm just gonna fill it and glue it. I'm gonna fill it with my go-to on pieces like this. It's dark, it's got different material in it, so coffee actually will work well for that. Anything that... Uh, We'll fill it, then the glue will bridge that gap. Uh, will work. Some people use sawdust, and the advantage of sawdust is it. It's the difference between trying to hide it and accentuate it, basically. Sawdust, you're trying to hide it, but with this, there's different colors here. I've got dark here, lighter over here. I don't think that I could get sawdust. I think the sawdust is just going to show up as well. So I'm thinking that I'll just, rather than try and hide it, just put the coffee in there, which is a nice, nice color with, with the wood and uh, not try and hide it at all. So with the coffee, the goal is to fill it as much as possible, the crack, and then add the glue to that. So it not only glues it, but it fills. It'd be way, it's way too big of a gap to just rely on the glue to fill it. Plus you don't want the look of a clear, a clear gap. So yeah, that, uh, well, we'll probably have to do a couple layers. So I think that's good to start. And the glue will soak in as well. So that'll do a good job of holding that. 
So I'm gonna fill that and then we'll let it sit for a little bit. Typically don't use accelerator when I glue because I want the glue, I don't want it to set up quickly. I want it to be able to run down in. Whereas if I hit it with accelerator, then it's, it's one and done and tends to be just more on the surface. This is a probably a medium viscosity, so but that crack is plenty wide enough that it will it will absorb down in there. On very fine cracks, you want to use a thin so it'll absorb better, run down into the crack. But uh, again, this crack is plenty wide enough. I think the uh, medium will work fine. Let that sit for a little bit. I'll probably put some more coffee on it and then hit it with some more glue before we go back to turning. So as you can see, and I don't normally do this, but it worked fine, just because I don't have a lot of room here with this face plate, but I started to turn the inside, mainly because I couldn't wait. Uh, so you can see what that's doing. Now that I've thinned this out, I'm not gonna lose this branch, although it may not be as obvious that it was a branch. There will be an opening here. And then this one is actually, very much a branch because you're going to see that. Debating on whether to keep the bark. I'm no longer debating. I'm not keeping the bark. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to turn out quite nice. You're going to have a natural edge there. You'll very easily be able to see that that was a branch. And I think this will show as a branch quite well as also. And it's, by the time I remove the bark, it's going to be down that opening there is going to be down quite a ways. I'm not a big fan of bark. Uh, on a very, very thin bowl it's nice, but on something like this I, I think I'd rather get rid of it. And it also depends on the bark. It's not nice bark on this. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy with the shape now. So I'll continue to work that a little bit. This crack is looking good. I will put a little more coffee in here, fill it. Looks good on the inside. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the way. Uh, I don't want to pry on that because that's actually prying on that crack. So I'll, I'll let that be for a bit. I'll work a little bit more on the inside and then uh, we'll take another look at it. But the outside's all shaped and it's pretty smooth. It's ready for sanding. Uh, pretty pleased with the surface there. There's a bit of tear out there, but that'll easily sand out. So this is a natural edge bowl, just meaning that the edge is left the way it is, but the bark is removed. But I do have to sand it a little bit. And here I've got a flapper wheel, and I just go around and lightly touch that natural edge. I don't want to make it so smooth that it doesn't look natural anymore, but I do have to just make sure that there's nothing rough. So here you can see the final shape that I ended up with. You can clearly see the two branches, which is a look I was going for. And the hardwood, which is a dark brown, gives a beautiful contrast against the sapwood on the outside. Here I'm pointing out there's a little bit of tear out, so I will come back and finish that up a little bit. But uh, other than that, it's ready to apply the finish. I started sanding at 80 grit. Being wet wood, there was a little bit more tear out, and I didn't get as good a tool finish as I would like, but it did sand very easily. So I did apply the sanding sealer, and you can see here, sanding sealer also helps point out any imperfections because it won't absorb the same way into those areas. So it makes it easier when I go to sand it a second time 
to identify any areas that just need a little bit extra attention. When it comes to finishing this bowl, I have a lot of choices, but I chose to use spray lacquer. The reason for using lacquer is I obviously can't apply a friction finish because of the shape of the bowl. Make it very difficult to try and rub something on with the discontinuous shape. And the bowl being wet, again cut within the last two weeks, there's still moisture to come out of this. And I want to slow that down as much as possible. So the lacquer will help seal it. The moisture will still be able to come out, but it will definitely slow it down. And as far as drying goes, the slower you can dry a piece of wood, the better, the less likely it is to crack. So let's talk about this bowl. I think it turned out very beautiful. It's elm, as I mentioned. It's green, turned about, sorry, cut down two weeks ago. And I managed to save two branches. You can see the smaller one coming out here on the side, and then a larger one over here. So uh, beautiful grain pattern, nice hardwood in the center. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, it's elm, about 12 inches in diameter and about four inches thick. So a beautiful bowl. And thank you for watching. First thing I have to correct, I said four inches thick. Obviously the bowl is not that four inches high. Here you can see the little branch again. It's a nice little feature. The bigger branch, which is a little rough on the very end. Uh, it's a bit of the bark and the wood fiber sticking out, you can see here. They have been sanded down, so they're not rough, but uh, left the natural texture. And you can see the heartwood, which is the darker center, makes for nice contrast. 